Hello and welcome to Immunology Practical Tutorial. Today's tutorial is about using ELISA to measure cytokines produced by in vitro stimulation of macrophages. The goals of our practical today is to perform an in vitro stimulation of macrophages by co-culturing them in the presence of trypanosome lysates and LPS. Subsequently, we will use sandwich ELISA to measure cell activation by detecting TNF-alpha, IL-6 and IL-10 cytokines. Macrophages are one of the first cells to encounter pathogens in tissues and organs. Once stimulated by pathogens, they produce cytokines. In this video tutorial, we will use a modified macrophage cell line called RAW264.7. This cell line helps us to mirror the cellular response of in vivo macrophages. Cytokines are numerous small proteins that control immune cell behavior such as proliferation, differentiation, function, and leukocyte migration in response to an invading pathogen. They are majorly produced by immune cells such as macrophages, B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes. In this video, we will use lipopolysaccharides, popularly known as LPS, to stimulate macrophages for 24 hours. LPS are endotoxins, which are found in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. We will also use trypanosome parasite lysates to stimulate macrophages. Because the amount of cytokine production depends on the concentration of the stimulants, we will use these two stimulants in different concentrations. After the stimulation, we will perform enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, popularly known as ELISA, to detect the concentrations of different chemokines that were secreted by the stimulated macrophages. Let's quickly look at the different types of ELISA assays. We have the direct, the indirect, and the sandwich ELISAs. The direct ELISA is one in which the antigen to be detected is first coated on a well plate. Subsequently, a detecting antibody which has already been conjugated to an enzyme is added to bind to the antigen. Afterwards, the substrate of the enzyme is then added to the assay. The assay changes in color if the assay is positive and the absorbance of the colored reaction is measured with an ELISA reader. The indirect ELISA is one in which the antigen to be detected is first coated on a well plate and a complementary antibody called the primary antibody is first made to bind to the antigen. Afterwards, a secondary antibody, which is a detecting antibody that has been conjugated to an enzyme, is made to bind to the primary antibody. This is sometimes called the anti-antibody. Then, the substrate of the enzyme is added to the assay, which changes in color if the assay is positive, and the absorbance of the coloration is measured with an ELISA reader, as in the direct assay. A sandwich ELISA, also known as the capture assay, is one in which a capture antibody is first coated onto a well plate before an antigen is added. Subsequently, as it was done in the indirect ELISA, a primary antibody is added and then a conjugated secondary antibody is added for the ELISA development as usual. Then the ELISA signals are measured on the ELISA reader. For today's experiment, we will use the sandwich ELISA. Having gone through the principles of macrophage stimulation and ELISA measurements, let us go into the laboratory for the experiment.
Label the 96 well plate and seat the first three wells of A to H with 100 microliter of the 10 to the 6 cells per ml stock. Lay the cells in the CO2 incubator for 1 hour for the cells to adhere to the place. From your 50 microliter stock of parasilicate in 1.5 ml chip, prepare the serial dilutions 1 over 10 and 1 over 100 of the parasilicate in 100 microliter final volume using the DMEM cell medium. Likewise, you have been given a stock of LPS. You will have to prepare 1 over 10, 1 over 100, and 1 over 1000 dilution using the DMEM that you have been given. After 1 hour of addition of cells, take out your plate and add 10 microliter of the LPS and the lysate to the cell to stimulate them overnight. Add the stock of LPS to wells A123, 1 over 10 LPS to B123, 1 over 100 LPS to well C123, and 1 over 1000 LPS to well D123. Add undiluted lysate to wells E123, 1 over 10 lysate to wells F123, and add 1 over 100 lysate to wells G123, add DMEM only to wells H123. Place the 96 well plate into the CO2 incubator and incubate the plate 24 hours. After incubation, collect the supernatant and store it at minus 20 so it can be used for the ELISA. First, I'm going to add my capture antibody such as TNF alpha, IL6 or 10 using a multi pattern channel to a 96 wall plate. Be sure not to create any bubbles while you're pipetting out your capture antibodies. Once coating is done, seal the plate with parafilm to avoid drying your antibodies. Then incubate your antibody coated 96 wall plate overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Next day, take out your plate from the refrigerator and peel off the parafilm. Then wash the plate once using 300 microliters of PBS supplemented with 0.05% 220. Now invert your plate on the sink and firmly throw the capture antibody to remove it from the plate. You can tap the plate with some paper towel for thorough removal. Block the plate by adding 200 microliters of 1x blocking buffer to prevent non-specific binding of your capture antibody. Once again, seal the plate with parafilm and incubate at room temperature for 1 hour on a plate shaker at 5 rpm. While the plate is blocking, prepare the cytokine standard. 
using the highest stock concentration of TNF alpha, IL6, and IL10. Make 1 over 2 series dilutions up to 1 over 64. Since we are doing 1 over 1 series dilutions, you will need a total of 6 dilutions to reach 1 over 64 for each cytokine standard. Wash the plate once, as previously described, using a multi potato channel. Add 100 microliters of each dilutions of the standards in triplicates. Here you're starting with the lowest concentrations of your dilutions and move up to the highest, so we don't have to change our tips between every addition of our diluted standards. Be sure to only add the diluting reagent, such as PBS, on the H1 through H3 well for the negative control. Add your samples in triplicates accordingly from H4 through H6 up to H4 to H6. These triplicates allow a more accurate concentration determination and statistical analysis later on. Seal the plate with parafilm and incubate at room temperature for 1 hour on a plate shaker at 5 RPM. Wash the plate once, as previously described, using a multi pipetto channel. Prepare one of a 200x detection buffer using a 1x blocking buffer and add 100 microliters of the 1x detection antibody to each standard, control, and sample in each well. Seal the plate with parafilm and incubate at room temperature for 1 hour on a plate shaker at 5 RPM. Wash the plate once, as previously described, using a multi pipetto channel. Prepare one of 1000x avidin horseradish peroxidase in a 1x blocking buffer. Add 100 microliters of the 1x avidin horseradish peroxidase to each standard control and sample in each well. Seal the plate with parafilm and incubate at room temperature for 30 minutes on a plate shaker at 5 RPM. Here we are going to wash the plate three times as previously described. Right before the next step, prepare fresh TMB substrate by adding equal amount of TMBA and B together. Since they are light sensitive, be sure to protect it from the light. Add 100 microliters of the freshly prepared TMB substrate to each standard, control, and sample in each well. Then incubate for 15 minutes in the dark on your lap bench. Here I'm using an aluminum foil to protect the substrate from the light. After the incubation, peel off the foil and you will see some of your wells turn blue. This happened as TMB is being oxidized as horseradish peroxidase is being reduced. The darker the blue, the higher the concentrations of cytokines or antibodies in our sample. Add 100 microliters of 2N of sulfuric acid to stop the reaction. You'll see the color changes from blue to yellow as TMB is being oxidized once again. Finally, immediately scan the observance at 450 nanometer for reading the oxidized TMB, though one appears as yellow, 
and 570 nanometer for reading the plane itself to obtain the routing density of our target cytokines or antibodies in our sample.